becoming the EP 21st Century Hippie was kind of just like a natural no-brainer almost. It felt like the closing track from the moment we recorded it. And from the moment that my drummer who played, his name's Dave, he's awesome, Dave Hidalgo Jr., incredible. And the moment he laid down the drums for that, we were like, that's it. This is this is the closer. This is this is the song. It just felt like epic, um, and so you know, hence hence the, the the EP being called that. The song itself um, was written on a day here in LA. It was like 116 degrees outside, and at the time I was living in a house with a pool. And I was just like sitting out. I would I would listen to Slim Whitman, and and Patsy Cline, and just kind of like lay out in like this cabana by by the pool. And there was this tree, and I would always just like <laughs> look at this tree and kind of lay out there. And and I had my guitar, and I spent far too much time outside that day. I definitely should have been inside more because it was just too hot. But um, I probably lost like gallons and gallons of, of water just like sitting you out there. Out of your comfort zone, and maybe something cool. Yeah, there, you know? exactly. So I was out there with my guitar, and and I remember sort of just like falling on that picking pattern, and that's what came first was the picking pattern. And I remember just like looking at LA and from my backyard, and I don't know. I, I've always had a complicated relationship with Los Angeles. It never really spoke to me. It's always been really difficult um, to kind of get a grasp on LA, and I've been here off and on for like over ten years at this point. So, you know, it was it was never like an easy thing for me coming back here, working here, trying to make friends here, growing up here. It was always difficult, and I found myself kind of like getting comfortable with it. And I found myself thinking, oh, like all of these things that you hated so much about LA are like all of the things that now you love the most about LA, which is a lyric in there. And so I think um, a 21st century hippie is sort of a love letter to all of the things I absolutely abhor about LA that sort of became, um, you know, the, the things that I now love about it. Um, and it is sort of just an ode to the fact that everyone here is, is kind of trying to do their own thing in a way and, and everyone has their own little life and their own little dream and their own little story that they feel like they must tell, you know? Um, and so many people I also feel like try and evoke um, this sort of like spirit that like lingers in Laurel Canyon, you know? It's like I'm going to take this sort of like you know, Jim Morrison ghost and, you know, yeah. and I, this is what I will eat and breathe and this is what will fuel me here in LA. The whole EP as a, as a body of work, what is, what is behind that? Yeah, I, I think how I described it is, it, I mean, all, I wrote all of the songs so long ago now at this point, I'm about to turn 21. I wrote a lot of the songs when I was like 15, 16, 17. So it really feels like a snapshot of my young womanhood. And yeah, I, I described it to someone as like um, a like how to be a young woman, a proper young woman pamphlet with like the proper scratched out and like red pen. Um, Cause you know, what does that even mean? <laughs> um, and, and it feels like as a collection of songs, it's it's really just like trial and error and experiences, and each song is is definitely like a, a Polaroid of like a specific moment that I lived or a specific lesson that I learned in my growing up or an observation that I made in my growing up. Um, like the opener is called "Timed Test" and. I guess I, it, it, it's just really about like, I was just thinking about the fact that I was like never really good at timed tests in school and I was thinking like, why did they stress me out so much? This is so absurd. Like, I, I wonder, you know, why this was such a thing for me. And then I was just thinking about how I guess like life is a timed test, which does that mean I'm absolutely screwed? Because, <laughs> you know, that's like, I was never really good at it in school. So, um, 
you know, that song is sort of a, a rumination on that and sort of, you know, just uh, just thoughts and, and feelings. So each, each song is sort of, you know, like that in, in its own way. Being in the, we'll get to like the whole like movie biz in a sec, but growing up, you know, you, in your late teens and all that, you kind of, we kind of like, your late teens coincided with like the explosion of the internet, social media, and all that kind of stuff. And for, you know, emerging musicians, actors, you know, any, anybody who's like in the creative business, that's kind of crucial now, right? What relationship do you have with, with the internet, with the, the whole TikTok thing, the whole, you know, people on their phone all the time, driving yeah. all the time. What is the what is your relationship with that kind of thing and how do you how do you manage it, you know what I mean? As a, yeah. as a artist, you know? It is so important and I think, you know, I have little to no relationship with TikTok and, and the internet. I'm very bad at TikTok. I wish I knew what it how to TikTok. Um, but do I? I don't know if I wish I knew how to TikTok. It's kind of scary. Um, when it comes to my like relationship with Instagram, I guess it is like more crucial. I mean, I guess TikTok is probably more crucial in certain ways as a musician. But I, you know, I have no idea at this point. I think like, yeah, Instagram is probably something I should take more seriously. I just view it as I think what I've always viewed it as, which is an app, and uh, you know. I sh should maybe think about it more in terms of you know my relationship to music, but my music feels so separate. Yeah. It feels like something I do because I love it, and yeah. and something I do because I need it. And and though I share it on Instagram, my music is not, or my Instagram is not the main you know source in which I share my music. If that. And so, what was your what was your introduction to music? You know, in your in your life, you've been you've been exposed to music since since the beginning, right? Since the beginning, I've I've always been been playing music ever since I was a kid. I, I started playing piano and singing songs and things like that when I was like four years old. What's the first song you ever learned to play? Oh, um, I don't know. I was always teaching myself songs by ear. So when it was on the piano, um. Ooh, I don't know. Do you know Hercule Poirot? Like David Suchet you know, and the that. BBC. Yeah, I, I remember teaching myself when I was like five years old how to play the BBC Hercule Poirot oh, theme. Okay. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, it's like do 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 It's, uh, yeah, it's just, I don't know. That, that was maybe something. Um, I taught myself how to play guitar uh, when I was like 13. Um, and so I remember the first thing I learned how to play on guitar, uh, which was the opening to Roll Away Your Stone by Mumford and Sons. Oh, uh, nice. Do you know that one? Yeah. It's an E, and it's just like do 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 I was like super into picking stuff. That was like the first thing I, I taught myself. Um, and I just remember like not being able to do it fully because there was some hammer-ons and some hammer-offs, and I was like, fuck. I don't have calluses yet, um, so I would just play until my hands would bleed, basically, <laughs> so I could play it. With, with that, was that with the uh, with the movie biz and all that? When did that come into play? Uh... So I've been working professionally as an actor since I was ten. Um, so yeah, I've I've been you know working and auditioning. I, I started filming my my first professional television show in 2011, I think. So, you know, I've been working What do you remember ever from since that time? Then. Do you remember like the first time you were set? I do, I do. Great song, by the way. Love the Beatles. Um, but, yeah, the first time I was on set, I, I vaguely remember it, yeah. I, it was for Veep um, with Julia Louis-Dreyfus. I was filming in Baltimore. Um, I remember they like there was this like huge room that we had to like check in, and there was like all of these other kids because I was playing a school student, so I had all my classmates there. Um, but I remember I got I got a trailer because I had a line. I had like four or five lines, which I think they 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 ended up cutting ultimately. So I wasn't that was like my first 
time being met with a classic Hollywood disappointment, which was just like filming a show, your first show ever, and then not being in it, <laughs> basically, um, which is fabulous. I, to be honest, had no problem with it. Uh, and I wasn't really disappointed either. Um, I don't know why. I was just, you know, happy to be there. So, um, yeah, that was my first memory. And I remember just being like, oh, my God, there's so many awesome actors here. Whoa. Yeah. You know, and then Ooh. after that, I did 30 Rock. So I was like a blessed little kid. Oh, yeah, because I was going to say, what was the most intimidating moment for you on set? Um, like, when you're on 30 Rock and all that, like, that's a major show. Yeah. Well, love, you know, I love Victor as well. Yeah, I mean, you I know, think... What is the, was, the, was there like a, like, what one moment where you were like, oh, shit, like, I'm actually... Yeah. Uh, there's something like big here, you know what I mean? Like, well, I definitely don't think when I was 11 and I was sitting in front of Tina Fey, I don't think I was like, wow, I'm onto something big here. I don't think that at all. I was scared. I wasn't actually scared. I, I was like surprisingly chill. But I remember I remember being super excited to meet Tina Fey and super excited to meet James Marsden. I was super scared to meet both of them. And James Marsden was his, was in Enchanted, which I loved as a kid. So I was like, oh my God, Prince Charming is going to be here. Yeah. What? Um, what was that like? What was the, the, the moment you, you met them? I don't and actually you. remember. I, I don't remember the moment that I met either of them. I just remember having the best day and drinking a lot of hot chocolate in the scene. Um, and I remember seeing James Marsden pick up a chair, and that is about it. And I remember playing Draw Something with Tina Fey. We played a lot of Draw Something together, which was so fun. She was lovely. She's, yeah. she's the best. She, she seems like she was cool. Yeah, life, she's right? so cool. So, so cool. Everyone was so cool. Everyone was so cool. But... Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't think there's ever, I don't even think even today, I think there's a moment where I've been like, man, I'm onto something big here. I just feel so lucky that I've been able to work for 10 years. You know, I, I just feel very lucky and i um, grateful. And I just, fingers crossed, you know, hope I can keep on keeping on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So what is what is it what is it what's a day in the life for you when you when you like oh my in, god when you're filming the show mm -hmm. right like when you got like some 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 stuff going uh, what's a day in the life like and obviously not not every day is the same right not every like, day is the same every what, day is very what, just different just walk us through like a day in the life of a professional actress yeah it like, it know. changes it 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 changes every day you, know, you do every day like are there rituals that you do every day? oh god I wish make coffee. That is my one consistent, uh, making my cafecito in, in the morning with my little cafetera. Um, I love, I love my coffee. Um, so yeah, I mean, my, my one consistent is making my cafe. Um, but yeah, I mean, average like work day, I think would be like waking up really depends. I, I think like for a while, like this season of Love, Love Victor, I was waking up pretty early. I was probably waking up at like 4.45. Um, going downstairs, making my coffee and, uh, you know, getting dressed, getting ready, whatever, whatever, washing my hair, whatever I need to do. And, um, you know, getting in the car to go to work around like 5.30. Getting to work at 6, 6.15. And, um, getting in the hair and makeup trailer. One thing I was doing on set for a while is um, we were gifted by Disney like diffusers and I would put like spearmint oil in my diffuser every morning when I got to work. That was like a nice little, you know, ritual and, and have my trailer smelling nice. Um, but I would do that, go to hair and makeup, get all ready and by that time it's probably like 8 or 8.30 and and make sure I know my lines and, and you know, get to set and we'll probably film. If I've got, if I got there at like 6.15, I might not be off work until like 6, 6.15-ish in the evening. Um, and then I'd go home, probably get home at like 7, learn my lines for the next day, um, eat some dinner maybe, play some piano. I, in my house here in LA, I have, or I had, um, I don't have my place in LA here anymore, but I had um, my upright piano that I learned to play piano on. And I take it with me everywhere I go. <laughs> I feel very lucky to say that. But uh, my parents like shipped it to me for my birthday, so I had it here, and then I shipped it back east where I live now. But, um, 
but yeah, I have my upright piano with me. So that's something I'd, I'd like to do. If it was like, you know, past like nine or 10, I, for the sake of my neighbors, I would never, you know, play my, my piano. But I loved to play piano um, or try to play piano every day. And, and sometimes ideas would come and I would work on a song before bed and, you know, go for my lines again and nice. hop in bed and, and nice. do it all what again. The, what is your favorite sing-along song, like karaoke? Go to. Oh my god. I like, do you have people over like you play piano and everybody sing. Yeah, yeah. Like, or whatever. What's the yeah. what's your go to? So the problem is my I don't have like a go to song in which I play. I mean my go to on guitar is Hey Jude. That's that's a big one. Everyone always loves, you know, that one. Uh, the other funny one, I don't like it's it's a, it's kind of fun. It's a fun throwback song, but everyone loves "Ho oh, Hey" by the Lumineers. That's a really funny one. Oh, that was such a specific great that sing great sing along song. And that brings back crazy memories. Um, that song was such a moment, you know. Um, but when we do karaoke, it's often musicals. Yeah. We're big, you know. In my in my favorite musical, whew, my favorite musical is In the Heights. But I don't really do karaoke to In the Heights because, like, you can never, you can never fully top Lin Manuel Miranda. You know what I mean? Um, In the Heights or Great Gardens; those are my favorite musicals. But um, we, I, I, Les Mis is not my favorite musical, but we always do Les Mis in my house. Not sure why, but it's always Les Mis. <laughs> it's always Les Mis. Oh, and Stephen Sondheim. Stephen Sondheim is one of my like musical inspirations, yeah. and so we always do some, you know, Into the Woods or some Company or you know whatever. Um, oh, one thing I was curious about: what do you like the most about your role, your character on Love Victor? What do I like the most like, about Lake? Like you get, you know, you get out of yourself and like you become somebody else. Like, yeah. You watch you being an actress, right? What do you yeah. like the most of like being that person? We're very different, I think. A lot of people want to know about our similarities, and it's, it's hard for me, I think, to find similarities. I think our similarities are we both enjoy pop culture, and we both love, you know, um, sort of hearing about, you know, uh, big pop culture moments and being a part of those things, you know. I was in Puerto Rico when Bad Bunny's album came out. What better place to be, you know? Like, that was like a pop culture moment. I was so happy to, you know, be there for that. Um, and so I think Lake and I have that in common, but we do have so many differences. I think like she is like driven by this, like, um, this need to be popular and liked by people, or at least for like the first two seasons. And I never related to that. Even when I was in school, I was very contented just being kind of like the oddball, um, just kind of doing my own thing. Um, and so it was really important to me that I understood why that was so important to her because I didn't personally relate. I had to, you know, go out of my way to make sure that I understood why she was doing this and how I could properly portray that because a lot of people do relate to that and it's a completely valid experience you know what I mean and 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 that story deserves to be told so um, that was a big thing I think for me is like making sure I understood that so I could like properly you know portray that um, and she's just so much fun she's a lot of fun to play my favorite actor is Jimmy Stewart just an icon. Um, I love his movies. Um, maybe Katherine Hepburn as well. She's amazing. Um, favorite musician? Favorite musician. Wow. Um, George Harrison. Um, oh my God. He is just my musical soulmate. I don't know. I think all must all things must pass is all things must pass is my favorite record. Maybe it's so good. Um, or maybe <clears throat> it is. It is a record that is very important to me. It's like maybe the, my most important record. I think. Um, so yeah, George. George is my favorite. 
musician. Um, but oh my god, there are like so many amazing people. There's there's a musician, her name's Dina El Wadidi. She has an amazing album called Turning Back. That's one of my top five albums of all time. She's incredible. She's incredible. It's a beautiful record. Um, and, and she sings in Arabic and, and plays instruments and sings and it's heavenly. Um, it's just stunning. I think Tamino is one of my favorite modern musicians. It's hard for me to say because, you know, it's like I want to name, you know, like, uh, you know, Duke Ellington and, you know, like all these people that aren't alive and, 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 and all of that rings true. David Bowie and, you know, whoever it may be. Um, Yola is amazing. She's incredible. Celeste is incredible. She's like one of my favorite vocalists right now. Um, uh, I love Hosier. I think his lyricism is unmatched. I think his songs are beyond thoughtful and I strive to, to write songs that are as thoughtful and, and poignant and tongue in cheek, you know. Um, uh, he has, wow, just so many brilliant ideas. So um, there, there are so many people I could, I could, you know, go on and on and on. Um, okay, well, tell me the last couple of things. Um, what is your favorite piece of clothing? Like something that that you always, always wear. You know what I mean? Like my earrings. Yeah. My earrings are important. My earrings, my necklaces. Um, yeah, I think earrings is maybe the big one. Earrings. I don't know if that counts. Does that count? Oh, Will yeah. you count an accessory? Yeah, my rings. My rings and my earrings, I think, and my necklaces are always, every outfit, even if it's like super formal, um, <laughs> I gotta do the earrings, I gotta do the necklaces, you know? Gotcha. Gotcha. Gotta do the rings. And lastly, if you could trade lives with any, any professional, like with the musician, actor, whatever, like celebrity, the, who would it be and why? If you could like, trade, trade lives, lives. Like, one day, like, what would you live? For one day? Yeah, like if you, if you could trade life for one day with, with somebody, anybody, like, who would it be? If you could, live, you, if you could um, live the life of somebody else. This is the funniest answer ever. I would want to switch lives. Okay, this is actually, this is kind of, it all works, it all works. Did you hear about the guy? He's awesome. He's fucking awesome. His name's Chris Hadfield, and he's an astronaut. But he did a cover of um, Space Oddity in space. We'll win that right now. Yeah, keep going. So, so Chris Hadfield did, you know, ground control to Major Tom in space. And it's I just iconic. It's amazing, and he filmed a music video, and it's brilliant. And if I could trade lives with anyone for a day, I would love to be Chris Hadfield for a day. Because imagine being singing David Bowie in space. I mean, come on. Yeah.